In today's video, we are going lithium. We are going from start to finish building a homemade budget lithium build with all the fruit. Solar, 240 volt, remote switching, battery diagnostics, and we'll be answering the big questions. And the King's Gear, this is probably the one you all wanna know about. How is it? What's my take on it? So let's get started. All right, so it's time to start the actual 12 volt build on the AD. So this is sort of my second attempt at it. Obviously this here was the first attempt, which it worked, it was all practical and, and such, but it wasn't really a nice finish and this box is very weak. Um, so now that we've got like proper storage and a proper drawer system, I really want to sort of take advantage of that space and mount my new tech in there. So as you see, I've got some new gear that will be going into the new setup, but our first job is basically just assembling all the old stuff. So I want to rip all this tech off because this isn't rubbish, like I can reuse all these components and then we'll sort of make a plan of how I'm gonna attach it all and mount it in the car. So this is my old AGM here on the left and this is my new lithium battery. Now let's compare their weight. The AGM battery weighs in at a whopping 33 kilograms. Here is the new lithium. 15 kilograms. So it's literally half the weight. You could definitely have a setup where you could run two lithiums and have double the power for the same weight in AGMs. And now there's so many more benefits to lithium than just that. You can discharge your battery further, you can charge it up faster, it has a way better cycle life, and it had a better discharge curve, but we're not gonna get into that today because it's made this video way too long. So one of the things I spoke about that I wanted to do with this 12 volt setup was make it safe, reliable, but still done affordably on a budget. So, this is an electrical box. Now, this one was just found on the side of the road, just in the scrap. I think it was used for a pool or something. It had all heating controls in it. This is just basically an electrical box that I'd be able to do that's dust proof, watertight, and it'd be able to seal the electronics in there in the back and be safe. Now, obviously, this is a lot smaller than the top of box I built before. I'm gonna try and keep all the same functionality and more, but in a smaller contained package. So. It's gonna be, you know, a real task to keep everything neat, but also safe and easy to work on in the future when I wanna upgrade things or change things. So this is sort of inside my head or what I'm thinking of doing. Obviously, I've got a heap of space down this left-hand side and I'm thinking of mounting the battery there. There's also a small crevice um, just back here behind the cargo barrier, which I'm thinking of potentially putting the inverter. The idea is to just use every bit of space possible and, you know, keep all this separated from where the passengers or potential passengers could sit um, if I wanted to put the seats back in. All right, so this is what we're sort of dealing with with the 12 volt box right now. Um, I've got a switch panel, which obviously came off my old 12 volt box. Um, I've got my fuse block. Uh, I've got my wireless relay controller, which basically allows me to use that little remote to turn on my lights. But this time we're gonna be adding some more sort of monitoring tools, I guess you call it. What these are, these are some little displays which basically monitor my wattage, amperage, basically how much current's going into the battery and how much coming, current's coming out of the battery. It'll be very similar to what sort of like those sort of higher end systems that monitor, you know, how much percentage of batteries got left in it, all that. But this is done on the eBay cheap. So these were like $30 uh, each. Um, obviously there's the eBay packaging, but yeah, it's basically, once you see it set up, you'll sort of understand that this bottom one's gonna be monitoring the DC DC charge power coming in. So that's gonna be the solar and the alternator. And then I can monitor how many say like over a, like a three hour car trip, how much, what hours that put into the battery. And the second one is gonna be monitoring everything that's coming out of the battery. So, you know, my fridge, um, anything running on second battery. And then you can say, oh, three hours, I've lost this much power um, and the DC DC charge has put in this much power. Now to run those screens, I've got these big shunts, which a shunt essentially allows me to, it basically is reading the resistance across it and that allows me to work out how much amperage is traveling across the circuit. So that's what that's for. That's a big chunker. That's like rated for 300 amps. So got to mount them on. And I've also included a circuit breaker, which is going on the side of the box. So just when I want to, you know, do work inside of it or unplug things, I can cut power to the entire circuit. So that's going to basically mount on top of here and everything for the second battery will be contained inside this little box. So we've got four relays in here. Those four relays are for the lights up on the, up on the car, just to give a bit more power. So it's really easy, because once this is done, like I can switch, switch, switch out those lights to you know, higher current lights or whatever, and it's all done. It's all neat in here, and it's all you know wirelessly controlled and safe and fused, and yeah, it'll be good. I'll also leave the links to all these little volt 
meters and stuff, and um, I'll leave links to where I buy all my crimps and stuff on eBay as well. Because all this gear in front of you right now is all bought on eBay, every single item, um, apart from that box. The box was found on the side of the road. So we got stuck straight into getting everything in the 12 up box. Now it was a kind of small box, it wasn't massive, so fitting everything in with all the features I wanted was going to be a little tough, but I was determined to make it work, so we got stuck in to screwing it in. Alright, so that's it sort of how it's going to look. Obviously, um, batteries underneath, inverters back there. Our DC-DC charger is going to probably sit, I'm not sure exactly, we're in the back in the drawer somewhere here, then we're going to wire the cables in through these grommet holes here. Two shunts mounted. I mounted them in a way that would keep them insulated um, from anything on the outside, so that's it all in there. And the next task was quite challenging. It, it was it was slow going because I had to basically cut out holes to fit in my screens, to fit my switch panel in this plastic window. And I couldn't afford it to crack. If it cracked, then it was game over. I need to find a new solution. So I took my time and I was really delicate in cutting out these holes to be absolutely precise. And as you can see the shadows making their way through the shed, I spent way too much time on this. Well, after many hours of uh, cutting plastic later, we've finally got our panels in and our main switch boards. So yeah, it took quite of a while, but it's all in there now. They're super secure and they look bloody awesome. What we're essentially going to do now is wire out the rest of the box. And then once that's done, we can actually start putting it in the car and start wiring up all the other accessories. Then you go into it. So let's get into it. So I actually really enjoy 12 volt wiring. I, I don't know what it is about it, but I could happily spend an afternoon soldering and crimping wires. And once you make a start to a project like this, it's really hard to put it back down. And it wasn't long until I had the first relays clicking. Now, I quickly want to pop in here to remind you guys and myself of the importance of fusing and insulating wires, especially in a you know a box that's as small as mine. You do not want anything shorting. Like, I encourage everyone to do this DIY stuff themselves, especially 12 volt stuff. But there can be catastrophic consequences for stuff shorting and you know burning down vehicles. Like, I'm not planning to sleep in this car, but if you're planning to sleep in your car or even in a rooftop tent with a bunch of 12 volt gear inside, you really want to make sure all that stuff's like fused, perfectly sealed. Because yeah, I've seen all situations from professional auto elect to, you know, just the average person like me, rigs burning down. It can happen to anyone, so make sure you fuse and insulate those wires and wire everything up correctly. So I'd made good progress on the wiring, but it was time to work out how I was going to mount the battery in the car. Alright, so let me bring you back on speed because a lot's been going on very recently. Right now we're trying to mount the second battery in the car because the travel box is pretty much all wired up, well as much as it can be outside the car. Because the next part's going to be wiring all the DC DC charger, solar panel, all that stuff's got to be wired up. So what we're doing is basically yeah, mounting the second, second battery, but to do that we're going to make up some brackets uh, and then plasma cut with a new plasma cutter out some little slots just to run a, like a fridge strap over just to secure the battery in. Obviously, we're mounting the battery down on the wings and we're wanting to basically still have access to the wings while mounting it down. So what we've done is essentially cut the wing in half and then Liam's developed like a hinge system to basically have to lift up one end of the wing so we can still use it for storage and all that. So he's been doing that, he's cut it in half, he's painted it all up and uh, that should be basically it, eh? <laughs> That's awesome. Go away. That's bloody mint lamb. So yeah, just use a plasma cutter there to cut out some holes to run some straps to hold the battery in. Uh, this is our new plasma cutter that uh, Sigweld actually sent out to us. So cheers to Sigweld. It's really, it's first proper job today. So yeah, it was awesome. Got to cut out those slots that you know would have been so hard to do without one. So yeah, awesome. Look at that. So now with the battery safely secured in the vehicle, we could now go about mounting the actual 12 volt box. Just because this doesn't open like the whole way, obviously. No, exactly. But that's what the comments are going to scream gullwing, I just know it. Alright, so the 12 volt box is in the car, the battery is mounted and secured. Still got to mount the inverter, still got to mount the DC-DC charger, but we're getting there. We've, this is a big milestone that's been that's uh, happened, so yeah, we're making progress. Also, this is actually Liam's idea. He's just added a little bit of um, pull cord on here, so you can lift it up, look inside the storage bin. Actually, heaps of room inside here, and then yeah. As you can see, it's pretty well spaced. Like we've, we've actually put in a huge amount of effort to make sure that we use as much space as possible. So 
I've got all my crap in my car right now and you couldn't really tell because it's all stored away and like it's just insane how much less room the 12 volt system takes up now. Like it literally takes up just this tiny bit of the car. So yeah, I'm really happy. Um, I'm really looking forward to tomorrow actually wiring it all up. Get the front panel going and then once that's all in, we should be asked to look at those diagnostic gauges and see like how many amps the fridge is pulling, how many amps everything's pulling. So it'd be very exciting, but that's tomorrow's mission. So let's do it then. All right, so now it's time to run power to the actual travel box itself. So we've already got our battery all mounted in there. So today's basically going to be like running cables into there and then also setting up our DC DC charger to take on our solar and obviously top up the battery um, with its new charge. So yeah, let's get onto that. So the DC DC charger doesn't come with a lot of cable length. So you have to make up your own loom like I did here. Then I could put it in the car and wire it all into the 12 volt box. Also, now that I was moving to a DC DC charger, I had no need for my old King's smart isolator. So I was to rip that out. I dragged some new cable through for it and then we could turn on the box the first time. And when those screens started showing real live data, I was bloody over the moon. So the box is getting close to being done. Um, we're just going through and wiring now all the accessories in, which I haven't really been filming because you guys know what wiring's like. It's uh, soldering, cutting, crimping, all that stuff. So yeah, uh, the mission is the next make is sort of neat, get the last few connections in, and then we'll show you guys it all working. All right, so here it is. Here's the 12 box as it stands today. Now, I did this obviously pretty quickly. Uh, not a rush job, but definitely would have liked to change some things, which I'll talk about later. Um, but this is how it stands right now, and yeah, it's beautiful, and it takes up next to no space. But let's run through it, let's show you how it all works, and I'll talk about some data that I've collected throughout the day today of how the whole rig's been doing. So here's the box that we built. I designed this to be accessible through this rear window. Now, I know what you guys are gonna say. Why isn't there a gull wing there? Why am I being an idiot not putting a gull wing in? Um, okay. Gull wings are great, um, they're pricey, um, and I think this slide window, look, as much as it has, yes, cut me off using all this side, which sucks, right now I wasn't gonna get a gull wing, but I think a gull wing in the future would be sick on this rig, but I also wasn't quite ready to black out this side of the window. Like, it's just too early for me to think about a gull wing. Uh, all I wanted was a 12 volt setup that would just sort of work and do all the functions I wanted. So this is what I built. Firstly, here's the main panel. Uh, we got SIG port, USB port, switches. You've all seen this before. Um, these switches I've just wired up to do basic things. So this one is an internal cabin light which runs across the strip up here. This one here is my rear light. Now you'll probably remember a lot of this stuff from my original 12 video. This rear light is actually on a motion sensor so you walk under it and it lights up. So awesome mod there. Go back to that first video and watch it if you want to see it. I've then wired up my camp lights up here just on the switches as well just because sometimes you don't always have the key fob to do it. I'll show you how the key fob works. Probably the main reason the box is so messy is because of this key fob. <laughs> so I wanted to do uh, wireless switching, which I did in my last build and I absolutely fell in love with it. It's a, it's a true game changer. So um, with my wireless key fob, I can turn on my white lights, I can turn on my amber lights, I can turn just my amber lights on and just my white lights on. It gives me, you know, four switches, four relays I can switch with them. And it just makes life so much easier. You need to go to the bathroom or you're in your swag and you some light. I sleep next to the car and I just turn these lights on at night when I need light inside my swag and there you go. All done wirelessly with the car can be locked up. It's it's awesome. So back to the box. I've left these two as blanks for now just because I'm not sure what I want to do with them um, but they're there as blanks. And then I have these two babies. Now these screens is what I was most excited for with this whole build. It basically allows me to see what current's coming into the battery and what current's leaving the battery. It also monitors, monitors it over a certain set period. So I can reset these and after say the last 48 hours, I can see how much you know current's come into the battery, how much current's come out of the battery. So bear with this footage, but I'm gonna show you how the gauges work and what they're showing. So this bottom one here is showing everything going into the battery. So we have our voltage here of our battery. We have the current coming in. We have the watts coming in and we have the watt hours coming in over the set period. So you can reset this value whenever you want and then monitor how much has come in over that period. Right now we're getting zero amps because the sun's gone away, but I'll show you some footage later on of um, it really working and getting some amps in. And if I was to go and turn on the vehicle, watch what happens. And now if we come around to our volt gauge, and it starts to climb, there we go, 24 amps, 21 amps. 
each wheel takes a little second to sort of get itself configured to how it wants to sit. And there we go, 23.9, 23.8 amps coming in. So, so that's our charge coming in from the alternator to the back of the battery there. So obviously that's a 25 amp DC DC charge I'm running, so it's gonna max out at 25 amps, but I reckon that car and that alternator could push a lot more than 25 amps. So that's gonna be the next thing to sort of look at. And then yeah, once you switch it back off, current goes away and now I'll bring you on to panel two so this top one is monitoring everything that's leaving the battery this one's a bit fancier it has a little display here which shows you how full your battery is you set that up when you sort of configure the device so right now we're at 13.3 volts which is about 80 percent for a lithium so on the left here we can see the current that's been drawn off the battery so it's 54 milliamps we've got 0.71 watts and this what's drawing this power is essentially all the gauges all these screens, there's another gauge down there, um, the wireless relay set up, all those little things are what's making up for that, you know, um, 53 milliamps. But let me turn the switches on and watch it jump to amps and we'll see how much we can actually pull. So the fridge is all wired up right now and it's, it's running, but obviously it's just at temperature so it's not pulling any amps. So let's go ahead and turn on some devices and I'll show you the current jump. So we'll turn on the interior light, boom. Oh, now we're at 700 milliamps. Side lights are on. Now we're at 1.45 amps. Turn on another side light. 2.15 amps. <laughs> So as you can see, I'm very happy with this. I love like seeing what the car's drawing. It's absolutely awesome. So everything that's off the second battery will show up on that gauge. So no matter if you have a USB phone in or whatever, it's gonna calculate all that and display the wattage of how much power is coming off the battery. Oh, I nearly forgot to mention. And then you've got here, which is the time elapsed um, or the running time they call it. Um, it's basically how long it's been since you reset uh, these figures and so in 2 hours and 51 minutes we've had 84 watt hours come into the battery and 30 watt hours leave the battery so that's really cool that's why I wanted two screens and that's why you know this is an awesome sort of setup so back here it looks like quite a mess and yes it is I haven't cable managed it all just yet because I'm still in the testing sort of phase of this so it's a bit messy but you'll see down there is my inverter so that is a 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter also a King's one if you saw my video you know which one I'm talking about and that is also monitored by the watt meter so we can go grab you know an electric blender plug it in and watch how many amps it draws let's actually let's go grab a 12 volt device a 240 volt device hang on let's do that I know it's a bit lame but it's what I had on hand so here we have a 240 volt fan so go ahead and plug this into our inverter and now we should just have to flick the little switch and now we should just have to turn this <laughs> 240 volts so let's see what we're drawing here not too bad only 1.6 amps obviously it's just a fan you know not drawing any like crazy power or anything but that's that's quite good. And yes, it is safe to run all that current through these screens because I'm running a shunt on them, which is rated for 300 amp hour. So it's basically just two little wires sitting on the shunt that are just measuring the resistance across the shunt. So that's how I'm reading all these voltages safely. I, you probably have seen me or Liam use those inline watt meters in the past, which I think are rated to a couple hundred amps, which I think they're okay too, but I just felt a shunt was a bit safer and um, yeah. And I also forgot to mention, I added an Anderson plug for solar input. So you can take an unregulated panel or solar blanket, plug it in, and that'll join up to the DC DC system and then charge the batteries. And because now all the 12 volt gear is back here, we have so much room here in the back to put bags or rear seats or whatever we wanted to put back here. So you can see I've run on my wiring sort of behind the cargo barrier, which goes up to the roof. I do have a few cables coming up for roof lights, rock lights, all that's on the second battery. So um, that's why there's a lot of cables up there if you haven't noticed. I've made sure to also still include my fire extinguisher just here. It serves two purposes, one to extinguish fires, but two to hide my sloppy cable management. Now I know everyone's saying, show us inside the box show us how bad the cables are i'll show you inside oh i didn't even mention um yeah and before i i always before i ever open this box or do any you know modifications or anything i did include two circuit breakers on it one circuit breaker for the solar because i've noticed then when you don't have the solar disconnected the solar will still run the charger and even push current into the circuit so i first always 
disconnect the solar, which is just on a little circuit breaker, so solar cuts out. And then obviously there's a big circuit breaker on the side here. And I'll cut this one too, so just boom. Once that's cut, the fridge turns off, everything turns off. Anything that's connected to the second battery ceases to exist. So now it's safe to open it up and look inside. Now, I highly recommend these circuit breakers. Uh, I know everyone like likes to dog on them for not actually working properly. They seem to work for me when, I, when I've had high currents through them. And um, they're really handy just to stop everything with a flick of the switch instead of having to you know, take out a fuse or whatever. Um, they're just super easy and they just they make they make working on your travel setup and even building it just so much better. All right, so let's have a look inside. So my one's just got four screws. And the reason it does look quite messy isn't so much because I wanted it to be messy inside or I like you didn't care enough to make it neat It's because I need to have the wires long enough to get this door open so I could you know work on it while I'm out on the road So it all just connects like that and then I just simply turn this screen up and over and We've got enough cable length that it can all sit up there safely So that's why there's so much mess or it looks like there's so much mess inside the box is because there's a lot of cable length to accommodate for this opening but now this gives me a chance to actually work on it and do anything I need to do one thing you're gonna notice straight away is that like there's a lot of different color wires it looks really messy I would highly recommend you guys to get colored wire uh, it makes it just look a lot nicer and you can match you know you can match it all a lot nicer I've tried my best to use you know red and black and yellow and blue for like switching stuff where I can but obviously I was just working with what means I had and sometimes you'd have to fault to electrical tape colored electrical tape to just color the wires so you could basically see which one did what so my fuse block here which is almost practically full already uh, the, the relay up here wires relay controller my four main big relays my 300 amp shunt up here and my 100 amp shunt here for this DC charger all cables feed in through here I did have water resistant grommets on here and you might be wondering why they're no longer here I had to run in that many cables that they wouldn't fit through the grommet holes and by the time I mounted everything I didn't want to pull it out and drill more holes in it so yes it was laziness on my behalf I had to remove the grommets in order to make all the cables fit but apart from that super simple in there and then obviously up here are all my switches and my Siggy ports and the two little screens so yeah I, I know I'm gonna get roasted for this job um i really set out on this to make this look really pretty inside but it just fell apart so quickly and it just got really out of hand really fast and i think that's mainly because the amount of space i had in here maybe it would have been smarter me to earth the actual backing plates so and not to run so much earth wise or there would have been many other things i could have done in retrospect to make this better but unfortunately when you're working with a tight space like that and the door needs to come off and everything it just gets real messy real fast and so I suppose, you know, the positive of cramming it all into that box is the fact that it's so small. Look at, look how little room it all takes up. And because this new fancy little, little secret stash I've got here, we really haven't lost any room because there was just wheel arch under there anyway. Like the battery sits perfect, the box sits perfect. I can still load up on here and it's safe because all that's protected. It's literally what I wanted. It's absolutely perfect. And the King's gear, this is probably the one you all want to know about. How how is it? What's my take on it? Look, I've only used it for a couple of days. I can't really give a proper review on it. Um, it's all working, which is a good sign. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think there's a few things I'm, I, I was gonna say, talk about maybe. With the DC-DC charger, it is only 25 amps and I've seen other manufacturers making DC DC chargers that you know push 30, 40, even 50 amps. And this car can definitely push a 50 amp DC DC charger. The alternator is big enough. So that'd be my one sort of thing is is 25 amps big enough for a DC DC charger? Because it's I'll tell you right now, it's plenty enough for the solar. That's that's heaps, but for the alternator, is 25 amps enough? I don't know. Um, obviously, before this, I just had a smart isolator which you could basically dump 140 amp hours of current into my second battery. So it charged up the second battery like that whereas this thing because it's only 25 amps it might take a bit longer but yet again it's lithium it's a whole new thing i'll have to let you guys know on that one in the future so am i happy with the new setup am i happy i moved to lithium is the box treat me well look there's a few things that we've done differently i would have loved if i had more time to paint the box black or something on the outside and just clean it up it just 
you know how life is and it just sometimes you rush things when you shouldn't have but unfortunately that's what happened and it's all in the box now and I can take it out which I think once I've done some proper testing on it, I'll probably take the box out, paint it, make it all look nicer, clean up the cables, rerun a few of them to match with the colour of the cable wire. But apart from that, I'm loving it. It's perfect access. This doesn't bother me at all. I like being able to quickly just like unlock this through central locking. I don't have to carry a separate key to unlock my gullwing or I can actually see through it. The fact that there's glass is also really handy because I always like now come up here during the day, and, oh, what's my car doing? How many, what hours has it generated today? <laughs> and it's um, it's really cool. Obviously, yeah, a gullwing would be sick and I know all of you are tell uh, you're gonna tell me to get one, but I'm pretty happy with this right now, to be honest. It, it does what it's, it does its purpose and it's fine. But now that we have monitoring of, you know, what's coming in current, what's coming out current, we can really start testing 12 volt products and seeing, okay, how many amps does this fridge draw? How many amps maybe does another, you know, DC charger put into the battery? So it opens up so much more testing and diagnostics, having the raw data of what's coming in and leaving the battery. And I just can't wait to try the lithium on the road. Like it has, I'm so excited to go in a trip and just see how far it gets me the battery. So I think lithium is definitely, you know, on the horizon for us budget people. And I can't wait, to, you know, till everyone has a lithium battery in their car because from what I've seen just the past couple of days, it's efficient as hell. So yeah, hopefully um, the prices come down and we can all get one that rig soon. But yeah, uh, let me know in the comments what you think and when you're gonna go to lithium. And um, yeah, what brand are you gonna go? What battery are you gonna buy? What DC charge are you gonna get? Let me know in the comments. I'm always really curious for reading them. And um, yeah, thanks so much for the support in last week's video. You guys are the best. So uh, yeah, really appreciate it. See you guys next time.